Hey everybody, this is Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Well, another day is coming to a close. A day that I haven't used the camera. I was on the road all day. Um, we went and looked at a uh, forest that was full of trees free for the taken and they were already supposed to be down and everything and it was a long drive but by the time we got there and looked uh come to find out they were young small and big trucks were taking them for pulp wood so it was useless for us so we were thinking about getting trees for the mill and it would have been worth it uh, a third party was going to possibly pay for a truck with a clam, which is a, like a big arm that grips logs and loads its own self on the truck. But it wasn't worth it. And then Chris and I, over the past couple days, have done some work that we just plowed through. We finished the trailer after dark. We got the tires off that axle that we had here and put them on this trailer. So now it's got solid, heavy, heavy duty tri uh, tires and they're not split ring. So they are now safe to work with. And then we took the axle back because the guy that gave us the, the tires, he wanted his axle back. And this arm, I wish I had had time, but we were just really rushing trying to get it done, and it was after dark. My arm turned out very, very helpful for that job. And then you'll see a motor sitting on the back of the trailer. I'll take you over and show you what else I got. But we cut off this motor, behemoth of a motor, that I cut off with a sawzall. And uh, that thing, that's got to be 100 pounds. I can't lift it. If I lift it, I'll hurt myself. That's heavy-duty cast iron. Very, very powerful motor. I'm going to put oil. There's four lubrication points. I'm going to put oil in it and make sure that it's um, working well. And then I'm going to sell that. Now, I'll take you over and show you what that was on. This was a lawn ornament. Would you believe that? It was a lawn ornament, and that electric motor was on there. So it was cheap, and then Chris and I, we used that lift on the trailer to bring it home, and then I immediately lubed up. I don't know how long, I should have asked, I don't know how long it was a lawn ornament, but there was still a lot of thick grease in the bearings, and as you can see, I put fresh grease in and lubed that up. And the first thing I did is cut off that motor because I, it was too heavy for me to get off, for us to get off that without hurting ourselves. It was heavy. Loading onto the trailer with that arm is easy because you're lifting up and it's pulling it in. Unloading is harder with that trailer. So we took off the motor. I used the sawzall. I wish I had recorded that, but it is what it is. We were really in a hurry. Because so much has been going on the past few days, some on video, a lot of which you have seen, and then these odd jobs that we real quick rush, 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 and get it done that uh, I just didn't have the camera for. So that's why here we are today and now. So I lubed up the slider rails. This one is unique in that it has a sliding tray. So it's got some kind of a heavy-duty plastic-like rail. And um, there's, a, there's a roller on here. And then that slides neatly. And it's a pretty unique idea. They put holes in here so that when you push back, it doesn't hit the greasers. And how cool is that, the way they thought about that? So here is a buzz saw that the only thing I need to do is I'm going to put a 2x8 on there and drill slots and put a motor on it and we'll have a functioning buzz saw that's it that simple then this big 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 one which is really huge i'll probably end up selling this is really big and really really heavy so i'll probably sell that one because we don't need all that many but there's a functioning buzz saw 
and the blade is good and everything is, is there and it's already got a stand. If I was going to use this one I was going to have to build a platform because that was made to be on the back end of a tractor, a three point hookup on the back of a tractor with the flat drive belt. And it would cost me between a hundred or two hundred dollars to get the flat belt drive adapter, the PTO a drive for my tractor. Uh, used. Used price is between a hundred to two hundred dollars for that. Now I'm looking for one. If any of you guys know if somebody has one laying around, let me know because I'm looking for the Ford 89N um, PTO flat belt drive. So what you'll have is a big pulley like this and then a 90 degree knuckle and then the PTO attachment that goes into the tractor. And that's what I need because I'm going to be having a lot of equipment that runs off that. But for now, this was lawn ornament and I have engines everywhere. So this was the cheaper way to go for now. Quick and easy. And it's a self-sufficient freestanding machine. Um, I don't need to hook it up to the tractor. So that's convenient. I'll just get rid of everything else. I am going to have stuff to run off the PTO though, like I said. So I'm looking for that adapter. So keep your eyes open if you see one for my Ford, the Ford 9 and Like I said, it has a 90 degree turn. It has a big pulley like that and then a knuckle and a 90 degree turn and it goes into the, the PTO of the tractor. I'm looking for that. Here you may notice a sad empty space. All alone and empty. This is where my chainsaw mill lived and it is no more. I sold it. And the idea is that I wanted to have the money to buy another tractor, which I now own, which I'll be showing you at another time. I now have another tractor fully outright and paid for. And then with $100 of that, I'm going to buy an Alaskan mill, which I can then use for cutting these up. Because what happened the other day is these are backyard logs, and uh, I grabbed one that I thought probably didn't have any metal in it, and I was wrong, and I hit a piece of metal and skinned up the teeth on my big mill, and I don't want to do that again. So... I'm going to take a hundred of that sale and buy an Alaskan mill and then I can zip these up without danger or harm to the big mill. So anything that may possibly have metal, anything that's unsure or risky or potentially dangerous, I'll run on the Alaskan mill. So most of these, especially the oak, I won't trust. Now an old timer told me if you see dark colors in the oak like this, the black, that signs of metal in the wood. So that's what he said. I mean, I don't know how reliable that is, but most of these have dark colors, especially around the edges, which is where wire would have been wrapped, for example. And that's, that's just not safe. Here, you see there's dark around the edges here. I don't know how well it's showing up. It's getting dark. This is all clean meat, but here you've got some dark where maybe a wire was inside somewhere. And it bleeds through the wood, they say, with time. So most of these oak logs have black in it. There's a lot of black. And there's a lot. And again, right around this whole area is a lot of black. I just don't know how, you know, how sure that is. There's a lot of black in there. So, I mean, he did warn me and I did hit metal on that one piece I cut. My second piece I cut, I hit metal. Now on the pine, there's no way of knowing. <laughs> the pine always has black. So there's no way of knowing. Uh, the pine has all kinds of crazy colors in it all the time. Uh, yeah, so that's the plan. I'm gonna end up getting an Alaskan mill to cut these oddball backyard wood uh, pieces like that. So that's safe for that way. And the chainsaw mill is gone to a happy home because I've got the big boy now. 
Here inside the Sari Sari shop, Chris and I finished. We've got extra stuff up there, packing materials. We finished the insulation upstairs in both lofts, all 100% done. And then the front wall, the um, paneling was never done. And I finished the front wall on both sides. And now Melanie has her desk. We're still setting up her office. But now she's got her office and she's putting up curtains and and uh, making her home here. This is her store. And then she's organizing her products on the shelves. It's going to take her a few more days to get completely set up. But it's I'm, I'm so happy. This is all ours. There's no extra cost. There's no extra expense. No other bills except for heating and electric. But that, you know, that's a given. But this is all ours. And now we're just going to concentrate on, instead of spending so much on rent and utilities and all the other expenses, and it was a lot. Oh, wow. When I looked at how much, when we did our taxes, how much we spent, oh boy, I'm happy we have it here now instead. So, uh, we got a lot of new products on the shelves. And we're making some sales again, trying to get our store going again and picking it up. So check it out, guys. It is sarisarishop.org, S-A-R-I-S-A-R-I, shop.org. And you can get your favorite Asian groceries shipped right to your door. And we still got a lot of products to get on the shelves because there's a lot of work in here to set up. But we are... Uh, most of them are online. I still got a few more to get online, but we are selling. Uh, we are mostly all online and uh, looking good. We got bubble tea. I hope to get that on in the next day here or so. We only got a case of bubble tea, but really cool. That's a popular thing. Yeah, so there it is, guys. Sorry, sorry, shop. And Chris and I, we finished it up. Finished all the insulation and the paneling and we have a store. We have the real deal here now. Now it's time to start uh, picking it back up. Well, that's it, guys. A little summary of what Chris and I did behind the scenes, as well as running the mill and all the uh, processing wood we've done. We did a lot of odd projects and jobs behind the scenes. Now that's a little summary. Oh, I went and got a... Um, the draw bar, I'll show you when I get over there. This and this piece is the draw bar that I took off the my second tractor that I just paid for. So that's going on the first tractor for now and we're gonna skid out some logs out of our forest. I've got to expand my shooting range the hunting season opens up in a couple days and I want to get some of the dead stuff out for firewood and a couple of living trees that may possibly give us some lumber so we'll see how it goes but I'm going to put this on the back of the tractor I know a lot of you guys had a fit that I pulled on the axle of the tractor I didn't like it either and I didn't want to continue on so I went and immediately got this today now this is cool because it'll take a trailer hitch as well and uh, I can also skid out the logs on that. So we'll get that on there tomorrow and uh, get out in the forest and start hauling up some wood. And that's it for the day, guys. Another beautiful day, although I spent most of it on the road. This is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. Please like, subscribe, and share, and follow our daily videos as we strive to become fully self-sufficient and off the grid on a budget. Hit that bell icon and get notifications of our uploads. Talk to you later.